Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome valedictorian and salutatorian. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. We finally graduated after months of our friends' parents asking us what we are doing as a career, where we are going for college before we apply, and what our majors are. Now, as a group of adults, we are expected to go out and contribute to the world by selling ourselves as professionals. As valedictorian, I am expected to know exactly what I am doing and to make a success of myself. For most of my life, I have strived to be the best, and maybe it has brought me to where I am today, but it also made me push away my friends and family and to periodically lose my role model's trust. There is such a remarkable expectation to succeed in our society with money somehow being the unit of account for our worth as humans. Being valedictorian doesn't mean that I am in any way smarter than anyone else, and it cannot dictate where I am going in the future. I am absolutely terrible at making decisions, and have never been efficient in planning for the future, yet I was asked what my future career would be, even though I could barely decide what colleges I wanted to pl apply to, let alone know what pathway would, would or even could be. Guess what? I will be attending Lawrence University, and I do not know everything that I am going to do there. Instead, I am attending Lawrence because they offered me what I needed most at this time, an opportunity to explore my options and how everything in our world connects, especially through the arts. I will be in the dual degree program in both the conservatory and college as a vocal performance and a completely unknown other major. Yes, I am an academic. Yes, I am a musician. Music is somewhat something anyone can make, but it is also a discipline, just like medicine or finance. It requires you to work towards a goal, even if it is just mastering the fingering for a note or learning the melody. But music also brings people together in a way that so many other disciplines can't. We can easily be thrilled by or openly accepted through music, and it provides a version of spirituality that surpasses the controversial disagreements between political or religious groups. Many cultures use music in everyday life, in 2018, I got the incredible opportunity to travel to South Africa with Atlanta Young Singers. Everywhere we went, we witnessed how music has brought people together throughout the nation's history, including during the anti-apartheid movement. So why doesn't America have such a connected culture? Our collective individualist culture only seems to be oriented towards those who have money and those who are trying to make money, 
and does not factor in the idea that t we together must provide humanity. From blending into a choral ensemble to simply enjoying a certain artist with fans all over the world, music and the arts can be used to make change. The arts push us to listen to each other because they are a central part of every single culture. If the arts were given more value and funding in the United States, there would be far greater appreciation for each other's art and for each other's existence. I know that I have been brought up participating in music and the arts my whole life, and they have made me who I am, as I am sure anyone at DeKalb School of the Arts can attest. For me, music has connected me to countless people and cultures while also teaching me to use my brain in an entirely different way through music theory and ear training. So please, parents and educators, take a step back and think about what you want for your children and your students. Stop worrying that your young artists won't make money and think about the fact that they are trying to add a little positivity to the world. I know that you want your kids to be successful, but pushing them to work harder and to sell themselves will only teach them that their worth to other people is more important than their worth to themselves. If you let kids be kids, if you allow them to explore and create, they will eventually turn into adults who are seeking to make the world a better place through their art and their effort. Thank you. I'd like to start with some thank yous. First, a huge thank you to Mr. Green. Thank you for being a wonderful principal for the time we had you. A huge thank you to Miss Branch. We love you so much. Thank you so much to Miss Staples. Your job is absurd, and you are a fantastic counselor. Thank you for all that you do. And finally, a huge thank you to the, all of the DSA faculty and staff. You make DSA what it is. It is traditionally the role of the valedictorian to talk about the future and what it holds for our class, while it is the role of the salutatorian to talk about the past. And it is impossible to talk about the past without first saying, oh boy, what a year. I mean, we underwent almost a total administration overhaul at the same time that massive district-wide changes were going on. And of course, our graduation is online. But it's not about that. This is the celebration. Now, I don't intend to talk your ear off or pretend that me being salutatorian grants me some divine knowledge that I must now bestow upon you in the form of a quote and then me blathering on for 30 or so minutes like I usually do. I'll keep it short. DSA is unique, and you, as the parts of a sum, are just as unique as it. DSA's unique requirements create a certain type of person. I can attest to your unique open-mindedness, your unparalleled ability to accept those around you, and of course, how hard you've had to work to wear this cap and gown. I can definitely attest how good most of us got at writing Pottinger essays at the last minute. Now, DSA instills all of that in all of us, and I'm sure you've heard all of that over and over again from 8th through 12th grade. What I want to talk about, though, is something that almost everyone here has heard, but it doesn't quite get said loud enough. What's really beautiful about DSA is how it instills in us how the arts and the sciences are not mutually exclusive. Good art and good math are not at odds with each other. For evidence, one needs only to look at Twain, or Douglas Adams, or Vonnegut, McEwen, Sagan, even Shakespeare. The greatest philosophers were also mathematicians. And what DSA does in its limited separability of the arts and the sciences is it starts to close that false gap. We go from band to math, from literature to drama, from biology to dance. What we at DSA, both consciously and unconsciously, begin to be accustomed to is the synthesis of arts and sciences. I do wish that in our schools and school system that we had the ability to, and freedom to actively combine the two. What we have at DSA is a unique creative freedom, and I firmly believe that we should be able to bridge the gap between arts and sciences. By which I mean, I wish Mr. Daniels would let me draw in pre-calc. 
In all seriousness, this kind of unique environment is really good at fostering creativity. And more than that, it's really great at showing that art and science can coexist in beautiful forms. And I think that's pretty neat. Now, I am younger than most of my classmates, and I am graduating alongside you. So I am in no way prepared to talk about how you or I are going to fare in the real world. Not only that, but so many of us are going on to so many different things. Some of us will be dancers, some scientists, some journalists, some singers. The fields we go into are so diverse, and from a small school, that's pretty amazing that so many interests were fostered here. I cannot personally attest to our future success on any career terms, but you being here in your cap and gown is a testament to not only your past success, but your future success. What, DI what DSA's diversity offers is a myriad of challenges and obstacles unique to its environment, and you overcoming all of the things offered by DSA provides ample evidence of your ability to survive and succeed in any environment in the face of any barrier without fail. I'm excited for our successes to come. Congratulations, tw class of 2020, and thank you for a wonderful five years. To the board, Superintendent Tyson, parents, friends, guests, and certainly not least, the class of 2020, good evening. I'll be the first to admit, I struggle with speeches. And I was more than certain that I would struggle with a speech of the virtual variety in this year at this time. I had to think, what do I say to this group? A group that has endured what they've endured in the midst of a global pandemic during virtual graduation. As I sat behind my computer screen, struggling to string my words together, my wife walked by and saw me perplexed and bewildered and said, why don't you just use the speech you wrote for your kindergarten graduation? No one would ever know. You see, last year, I was an elementary school principal, and I had the honor of addressing 80 bright-eyed five and six-year-olds and their esteemed guests at their commencement exercises. After careful examination of that speech, I determined that the words shared with our little people are just as meaningful to all, young and old. I mean, what was said to them could surely provide inspiration for these young adults venturing out into the world, right? That facetious little statement actually provided inspiration for the words that I'm going to share with you tonight in an address entitled, Oh, the Places You'll Go. That's right. Today's message is inspired by a whimsically penned children's book that many of us hold so dear. And it goes something like this. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who'll decide where to go. The statements written in this fine piece of American literature by the great Dr. Seuss ring true. Yes, you do have brains and you certainly have feet. And you're capable of steering yourself in any direction. But where will you steer and why? Well, that's up to you. When I look back on the life that I've lived since graduation, I can honestly say that, well, I've steered all over the place. And guess what? I'm gonna to continue to steer around, finding happy places and some struggles all along. You most likely will do the same. Very few will take life's express lane to success. But that's okay. There's no need for you to force a script for your future now. There's so much life to be lived and so many adventures to share. Instead of pressuring yourself to figure out what you're gonna do and taking the road to get there, figure out who you want to be and become that person. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. And wherever you go, you'll top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. More often than not, you'll find yourself in a rut and that's okay. 
Everyone can't win everything all the time. It just doesn't work like that. So what do you do? You look back to all the times you checked the call board and you didn't see your name. Or you think about all those times you just didn't make it on stage, but you worked as an usher or a stagehand. Remember all those valuable lessons that you learned while working on the fringe and found out who you truly were and what you were really made of. Life at DSA has taught us all a great deal. And you, the most resilient, flexible, and talented student body that I know of, has certainly learned its fair share of lessons. And what will you do with those lessons? You'll take them on your journey and apply them to real life situations. Just as you have in this year, you will continue to choose to persevere, no matter the circumstances. And life, life will continue to have its ups and downs. But don't forget when things are going well, because they most certainly will, keep on churning. Don't be so distracted by the harvest that you stop planting seeds. You never know when you're gonna have to return to that storehouse to retrieve something you put away years before. Opportunity will lie ahead and it will do so in great abundance. And for this group of lovely and talented individuals, those opportunities may look and feel a little bit different than others, but seize those opportunities and live in the grandeur of your individuality. But for, never forget those simple lessons that you learned in school. You'll apply some of those same lessons as you venture into adulthood. You know, lessons you learned in kindergarten, like share, play fair, don't hit people, clean up your own mess. One that's very important now, wash your hands before you eat or any time for that matter. Say you're sorry when you hurt people. One you'll yearn for as you get older, take a nap every afternoon. I certainly love that one. Be aware of wonder, stick together, live a balanced life. And what we were reinforced most at DSA, learn some and think some, draw and paint, sing and dance and play and work some every day. Though 2020 has been different and disruptive in so many ways, do not lose the value of your accomplishments. Celebrate and enjoy this moment. And though atypical, your graduation is unique. Today is a very special day and it is still very important. It makes me proud to see this class of 2020 76 young people who have so much to give to a world that is hurting, but has so much promise. We all are proud of you, and we cannot wait to see the sum of your contributions to the world. So in conclusion, step with care and great act, and remember that life is a balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three fourths percent guaranteed. Kids, you're gonna move mountains. So be you a painter or a dancer or singer on stage, you're off to great places, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Class of 2020, we couldn't be more proud of you. Now go forth and be great. Please welcome the DeKalb County School District Superintendent, Ms. Ramona Tyson. As the Superintendent of DeKalb County Schools, I hereby certify that all members present for the Class of 2020 have fulfilled the requirements established by the DeKalb County Board of Education and are therefore eligible to receive their diplomas. Please welcome from the DeKalb County School District Board of Education, Dr. Michael A. Irwin. First, congratulations to all the graduates and a special thanks to your parents, family members, and DeKalb County district employees that have supported you to this point. While we can't all be together at this time, please do not let this dis diminish your great accomplishments. On the basis of your certification, the academic achievements of this class meets the course requirements as established by Advanced Ed, the Georgia Board of Education, the Georgia Accrediting Commission, and the DeKalb County Board of Education. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Yay! 
Lillian Justine Thompson Nittler. Nathaniel Hunt Ellis. Faith Elizabeth Anderson. Lily Young Lee Huff. Elizabeth Dorothy Kirsch. Catherine Emily Stone. Sarah Catherine Werewill. Penelope Elizabeth Williams. Rebecca Kaiting Wu. Oluwadara QC Nylon Solomon Armstrong Mensa. William Douglas Blackwell. Eliza Mackenzie Boyenton. Anaya Marie Bridges. Kennedy Faith Brookins. Jordan Chase Buckles. Justin Diego Buckles. Isis Janai Canty. Quentin Hatari Carey. Joy Noel Carpenter. Faith Desdemonia Cross. Kamal Ali Dansby. Hunter Tyler Davis. Lauren Grace Deaver. Olivia Lee Else. Kelsey Lachey Fears. Angelisa Lynette Fletcher. Angelia Yvette Fletcher. Charles Ellis Floyd. Charlie Everett Ford. Nehemiah Anita Frazier. Asha Elise Freeman. Canolia Janae Freeman. Samaya Dina Huckabee. Ayanna Courtney Hyman. Kalia Rose John Baptiste. Ayanna Hope Johnson. Akia Akua Nefer Amen Queenie Sweetie Jones. Cameron Blake Jones. Kristen Michelle Jones. Christopher Harris Jordan. McKenna Yvonne Lawler. Sydney Ann Levy. Sine Elise Lewis. York Simone Lewis. Barbara Yelena Andreevna Lyashenko. John Demetrius Mati Hicks. Garris Austin Manning. Herman Mannings IV. Kayla Imani McGee. Jasmine Amina McKeel. 
Anthony George Mitchell. Eliza Lucia Mitchum. Orly Sarah Morris. Brooke Chandler Mosley. Ansley Jane Palmer. Taylor Lynn Pasqualetti Campbell. Naomi Deza Shama Perez. Sydney Simone Queen. Royale Soleil Randall. Matthew Legrand Drone. London Sky Alexandra Roberson. Jalen Nicole Robinson. Aaron Marie Rudd. Rachel Weatherby Sanchez. Heidi Marie Halsey Shell Sass. Lauren Ashley Swayze. Sarah Elizabeth Tangstrom. Michaela Arnice Terry. Treasure Nigel Trotter. Brandy Iona Underwood. Audrey Noel Wistnant. Corian Jador Wiggins. Deshaun Romario Williams. Angel Michelle Winfield. Kennedy Nicole Wright. Zenon Hibiki Wright. Congratulations! You know, traditionally, the turning of a graduate's tassel represents the transition from candidate to graduate. But the symbolism of this act is much more profound. It represents the culmination of many experiences and decisions ushering you into today. Many of these events have been shared with people here today. Please thank them continuously. It also represents the beginning of a chapter in your life where you are about to embark on a journey where new memories will be created with people you have yet to meet. Kudos to you, DeKalb School of the Arts. Class of 2020, please face your friends and your families, and please move your tassels from right to left and continue your story, making it a bestseller. And remember, wherever you go, there you are. Congratulations.